Did you know that between 50 and 70 million Americans suffer from insomnia each year and the causes are different for each one of them? A very enlightening educational and emotional film documentary, The Quest for Sleep, is a film that follows real people who struggle with insomnia that threatens to unravel their waking lives. Now, the film features a first-hand look at the toll insomnia has taken on one individual. Steve Ryan is here with us today, whose life and career as a video producer and musician have been affected by severe insomnia. And Steve's story gives viewers a window into the real strain insomnia can have on a person's waking days. Now, I myself have personally suffered with insomnia in the past, but not as severe as Steve Ryan as you will hear today. So ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome a film producer by day and musician by night, and from the powerful film documentary, The Quest for Sleep, Steve Ryan. Welcome, Steve. Hi, thank you very much. I'm very happy to be on the Dr. Ward Bond Show. How are well, you let me ask you this. How was last night's sleep? I did not actually get a lot of sleep last night. Uh, my band, The Legendary Pot Roast, uh, had a gig in LA. It was Meatloaf's birthday, and we were celebrating his life. And... The show went into about 12.30. By the time we loaded out and I got back home, it was two in the morning. I was super jazzed and excited from, you know, the performance and, and work in the crowd and just getting to sleep wasn't particularly easy. It's not on most nights, but those kind of nights make it even a little bit harder. Yeah, and I, you know, and I've talked to uh, anywhere from actors to recording artists and there is a rush of adrenaline after a performance and is that part of your insomnia problem i think the quest for sleep shows that everyone's insomnia problems are different and have many different causes mine <clears throat> i don't know if any of these are the causes um but they're just the lifestyle that i've sort of gravitated to because i don't normally sleep a lot at night and so night work is a great thing. And I, you know, obviously as a performer, I like to be up on the stage. So we do, I do tend to um, gravitate towards those kind of jobs. And I, you know, back when I was a kid, I was a karaoke host. And so in New York until bars four, four thirty in the morning. And because I knew I wasn't going to be sleeping anyway, so might as well go out and enjoy myself, maybe make a little bit of money. Um, but as seen in the film, it was really enlightening when we were all sharing our stories to see how it was that everybody had similar struggles and everybody had very different reasons why or methods of suffering through insomnia. Well, how do you, especially during the, the day, I mean, how have you uh, been able to function with little to no sleep at all and um, and try to just maintain this this daily work ethic that you have honestly when i was younger it was a lot easier you have a lot more energy you have a lot more or a lot less need to maybe or convince yourself that you don't need as much sleep um the movie talks about how sleep is one of the most important things that people need. And it's not anything we're really taught. We're taught, you know, good exercise, good diet, but nobody really talks about a good sleep habit. Um, for me, I tend to have micro sleeps sometimes. And that has happened, as a matter of fact, in jobs. I talk about it in the film that um, there was one day I was working on some video editing and I had my headphones on and I was intently listening to the audio that we were um, lining up with the video and I closed my eyes to hear better because we think that that is actually how we hear better. And I fell asleep for maybe 30 seconds a minute, but there was a snore and somebody saw that I was sleeping at my desk and that was the end of that job. Well, I, you know, I watched the quest for sleep from beginning to end and, and you were right. Every single person had a different story and everybody's causes of their insomnia. Not that everybody really knew what their actual cause was, but everybody's situation was completely different. And, and I, as I was watching, you know, one of the things that I loved about the documentary was the educational side of hearing some of these doctors 
talk about insomnia in ways that I've never heard other people talk about. You know, we always like, and you've heard the same things I have. You know, you're supposed to eat right, get exercise, uh, go to bed at a regular hour, uh, turn the lights off, darken your room, try to chill out. And for a lot of people, those things don't work. What I found very fascinating working on the film and working with these other people was that um, there's a lot of science behind sleep and there's a lot of research going on and how it affects the brain and the body. And I think that that was an amazing insight. I think we're told a lot of things growing up by different people who aren't professionals, who, you know, have a old wives remedy for something or whatever, but nobody really understands what it's like to go through insomnia unless you're the type of person going through it. And like, as you said, millions and millions of people are suffering with this all the time. I've pretty much always been an insomniac. I remember as a child not being able to sleep. I did a lot of reading because of that. I would just, since middle of the night, I would read any book. I would read the dictionary sometimes or an encyclopedia just to have something to do because I wasn't going to be going to sleep. So as far as causes, everybody has different physiologies and it's important for you to, um, it's important for an individual to be aware of what they're going through and then understand that it is a struggle. It is a disease. It is something that they need to talk to their doctors about and then their doctors can help them maybe get to a root cause, maybe get to a solution, but it is really a scientific process. And that's a lot of what the documentary focuses on is that, that it is a brain and it is a body issue. And I completely agree. And I mean, even for myself, you know, I have, I learned so much by watching the documentary from not only from watching people like you and the others in the film, but definitely the doctors explaining things about insomnia or the cycles of sleep that most people never learn. You know, we're always told, go outside, get your vitamin D from the sun, uh, go outside because it helps to produce more melatonin in the body so it can be released when you lay down at night. But I was amazed on, and I'm sure you did the same as the others. Uh, you probably tried a bunch of melatonin and herbal remedies and maybe medications did, and nothing worked, correct? I think everybody has different ways of dealing with it. And because they don't necessarily work, they're not anything I think I should be talking about. I mean, I dropped out of med school to become a musician. So, you know, <laughs> I'm probably not that smart about um, all the science. But what I do know is that the medical professionals really understand how it's affecting you and can work with you and your individual uh, specificity on how to deal with your problems. So what, what might work for one person won't work for another. And that's why the, the science of the, how the brain, how the sleep cycles are affecting your brain and how they're affecting your body. When you can bring that conversation to your doctor, they can focus on what might be good solutions. Um, I still struggle with insomnia. Obviously, as we just said last night, I did not get a lot of sleep, um, but I've become a lot more aware of my sleep patterns and how it affects me and and talking with my doctors. We're getting to a place where hopefully I'm going to be able to start having some really good nights of sleep. Well, do you uh, do you try taking naps during the day? I don't really have time to take naps. I'm just doing a lot of of tracking my sleep and just being aware of how my body feels. I'm trying not to push myself too far. I don't want to get into a situation. There's a situation with my uncle. I talk about how he fell asleep while driving. That's not a situation I ever want to be in. Um, there was another fellow actually named Steve in the movie who also his family was worried about him. He took, takes long drives uh, for his job. So I just, I just want to be aware of what's going on with me so that when I do talk with my doctors, that we're very, that they have all the information from me so that when they give me their information back, we're, we're really examining the full scope of what could be happening to us. See, and I love the fact that you are, that you're really learning to understand what 
you're personally going through, but also realizing that there are things that you may not or you should not be doing, you know, and driving is one of those things, you know, people don't realize that, you know, drunk driving and even falling asleep at the wheel, they're both extremely dangerous. And a lot of people, and just like your uncle had told you, oh, hey, I'll be okay. I'll be okay. And we hear that all the time. I mean, I remember uh, many, many nights of driving in the middle of the night and driving way too long and, you know, your eyes closed, you don't realize it. And then when you open them, you find out that you're in the other lane and, uh, and it can be extremely dangerous. So what was the biggest takeaway for you by participating in the film? I think for me, um, I always felt very isolated and I think it's a very isolating thing. I'm up, I'm awake at night. No one else is awake. Um, I, you know, I'd walk the streets and there'd be Pro, you know, in New York, even there, there, they say it's the city that never sleeps, but there are definitely times where you're, I've been walking around New York city and like the whole place is shut down. I, what I learned from the quest from uh, the quest for sleep was that I'm not alone. This is not something I struggle with that other people aren't dealing with. And I think sharing my story and hearing them share the stories create a conversation, create an awareness to other people who probably also feel isolated. And now that they know that they're not alone in this, that this is something that's affecting so many people and that there are people who understand the science or people who are working towards eliminating this problem. I, and again, it goes back to no one tells us that sleep is important. You hear, you know, get your eight hours, get your nine, but the way our work schedules work and the way school schedules work and the way just the world has, you know, probably, oops, uh, probably since the industrial revolution has changed what might be a more natural process for us. Nobody really lets you know that that is something that is incredibly important. And we are driven from whatever reasons in our lives, whether it's family, work, school, to sort of ignore that. And it was great to see that these doctors are telling people, don't ignore this. Don't, oh, I'll be fine. Don't, it's just a night of sleep. This is a really important part of your body. Your body heals when it's sleeping. That's when all the processes happen that fix your body, reset your body. So it is incredibly important, especially after like a long day of sound checks and performances and probably some editing in the earlier in the day that I do get as much sleep as I can so that my body is ready to go for the next day. Yeah. You know, it's, and you're right. A lot of people, they don't think about sleep. They only think about it the next morning when they're like, uh, I wish I had a better night's sleep, but they don't look at the absolute importance. And you actually brought it up in the documentary because of the fact that you started to understand, you know, diabetes can actually be a risk factor uh, from insomnia. Uh, Weight gain is another factor because if the body is not at at a resting stage to regenerate and the body regenerates, I mean, we're kind of like our cell phones. We plug them in at night to be fully charged uh, when we wake up in the next morning. But a lot of us, we don't feel fully charged because we didn't get enough sleep or we didn't get high quality sleep, getting down into that REM uh, type cycle or even the the deep sleep cycle. I mean, I've even worn a fitness watch to bed just to monitor uh, my sleep cycle to see when I actually fell into a deep sleep. Mine's always between 3 and 4.30 a.m. when I really get into the deep sleep. The rest of the night, it's all a light sleep because I literally can hear things that wake me up that most people would never even hear. You know, but something I want to ask you because uh, you live in New York, you're in LA now. Was the time change difficult or even made it more difficult in the areas of sleep or rest? I don't know that it made it more difficult. In New York, uh, as a video editor, I'm working with California a lot. So I tend to be on California hours, which, you know, again, I'm up later in New York. They're earlier in their time zone. So it works out nicely. 
again, I think everybody's got some, something different. Jet lag is obviously a real thing. Um, you know, the stimulants that we probably take, the pushing that we do, there's so many different um, reasons or causes that could be affecting your sleep, but may not be insomnia, uh, which is why it's important to talk to a doctor because again, sometimes it is just one night of bad sleep. But for the 25, 50 million people who are struggling with this, this is something that is ongoing and constant. And so just transferring a time zone for me may not be a big deal, but for somebody else, it might completely throw off any sort of consistency they might have, even if they've been struggling with insomnia and gotten to a certain point, something that simple could throw someone off. So again, it's, it's a lot about the awareness. You're talking about wearables, I, talking about tracking. Those are all very good things to bring information to your personal doctors to let them examine what's going on. Um, the science is great. I love that they're really looking into how the brain is affected and, and how that, you know, the brain controls the body. And so how does that affect the body? Um, and that's part of the educational part of the quest for sleep. It's, it's not only a conversation starter, but it's, it's a way to really say, oh, this is not just a thing I do at night because I'm tired. There's a reason the body sleeps. Right. And see, that's the thing that I loved about this film, because ladies and gentlemen, the quest for sleep is a film for everyone to watch. Uh, even if you don't have insomnia, just the educational parts alone are gold in your pocket because you start to understand how the brain functions. And a lot of people, their brain continues to function 24 hours a day. And this, and, and Steve, I agree. The educational part of this film is to me, I mean, I've studied insomnia and sleep and sleep cycles before, but to hear these doctors talk about it in a whole different way, uh, ways in which we may be able to see uh, improved medications to help people. Cause I even love the part of the film when they explained the neurotransmitter GABA where those types of drugs really cause a lot of grogginess the next day. And a lot of not just insomnia type drugs, but uh, other uh, psycho uh, type uh, drugs that are out there work off the GABA receptors in the brain. So for a lot of people, it just kind of makes them groggy or dumbs them down a bit, but that's still not the sole answer. And this film, ladies and gentlemen, is uh, it covers to me, it covers every base when it comes to insomnia and you need to watch it. And, you know, Steve, from, from your point of view, um, what do you want people to take away from watching this film? I think really what I want people to take away from the quest for sleep is that this is something that is very real. It is something that is affecting people that you know affecting people that you work with, people in your family, and that it's something that can be worked on, something that can be treated, just like any other illness or disease. And it's important to work with your, your doctors and find out why it's happening and find out what can be done. And again, just like everybody has different fingerprints, everybody has different reasons on how their body works. And so there's, as you said, not one sole answer to one thing, but the more that they're researching things and the more that they can find out about you and your body and how you respond to different treatments is going to make a world of difference. So I think that's what I want. I, I want people to be educated. That there are ways uh, scientifically to deal with this and that they should have those conversations with their families and their doctors. Yeah, I completely agree. And, you know, the thing that I loved about this film, Steve, is that it covered every base when it talks about the sleep cycles, when it talks about possible causes of insomnia. And I loved every person in this documentary because every single one, they had a, they had a different, um, well, I'm not going to say a different take on insomnia. They all had insomnia, but their reasons to have it were completely different but some of them didn't know where the insomnia started. 
and others seemed to, as the journey went on, they started to think back as to, oh, that's where it started. You know, it's like the, uh, the one uh, woman in the film that had to think back and realize that uh, her father passed away at the age of 33 in his sleep. And even though she wasn't scared to go to sleep, I think it weighed heavily on her that when she w tried to, to lay down at, in bed at night, that maybe that subconscious thought was always there, keeping her awake. So ladies and gentlemen, this film, if you ever want to see the most complete film ever on sleep, insomnia, the importance of why we all need sleep, this is the film to watch. And, uh, you know, Steve, I've got to ask you, uh, from what you've learned, what advice do you give other people who are struggling with sleep and insomnia? Oh, I don't know that I'm somebody who should be giving advice. <laughs> again, I'm still struggling with sleep. I guess, I, I, again, I know it feels like I keep coming back to this, but the best advice I can give is talk to your doctors about it. They have so much more information. It's all scientifically based. And I think that that's one of the things, that's an element of the film that, I think a lot of people when they talk about their sleep struggles don't. It is fantastic that everyone in this film is different stories, different reasons. I think it makes it relatable. It's probably why this film is winning awards. And I think it was just a semi-finalist at the Burbank International Film Festival. It's going on to other film festivals, probably win more awards. Um, but I think that the, the educational part of this film that you is not just sharing the stories but it is these doctors sharing the new breakthroughs in science that they're noticing about sleep and that i think is the best advice watch the film have the conversation talk to your doctors find out if what you have is insomnia find out if it's something else the doctors are the ones who can really make those diagnoses and can really point you in the direction of the treatments that are going to work best for you now, let me ask you this, Steve, because do you feel more hopeful now after participating in the film, learning all of this information, what these doctors have brought forth, do you feel more hopeful now after the film that maybe you'll end up with eight hours of sleep when that time comes? Absolutely. I, it has changed how I, I look at sleep, how I approach sleep, my relationship with sleep. That was a big thing we talked about while working on the on the film. Um, and I never thought of it that way. I never thought of it as like a relationship. There's something, you know, that you have to give, you have to take, you have to let it work right. And it really changed the focus of how I approach sleep, how I approach my waking time, um, being coming a very self-aware of how my body feels, what the effects are. Because saying I don't have sleep or I'm not sleeping well, and I, and I don't feel good in the morning, isn't information. It's just the situation. But the information that I'm having micro sleeps, the information that I'm only sleeping this many hours or that I feel pain or that I feel unaware or not as acute in my perception. So those are all things I can then explain to a doctor and say, this is what's going on. This is how I'm feeling. And then they can talk to you about different available treatments and then, you know, try different stuff, but all under the supervision of a doctor because trying to fix yourself when you don't understand the science is never going to work out well. Yeah. And ladies and gentlemen, you need to take that advice from Steve Ryan. If you are dealing with severe insomnia, you're not sleeping well at night. And I'm not just talking every now and then I'm talking about every night. You need to see your doctor, but really watch this documentary because what I want to see is I want to see you educated before you go to the doctor. Why do I say that? Because many times in today's uh, society, if you just go to the doctor and say, doc, I just don't sleep well at night. The first thing they're going to do is just look at you right out of prescription and hope for the best. But I want you to be more educated to understand how the brain works, why the brain can uh, calm us down at night. And then for some of us, why the brain continues to function at a very high level that keeps us awake. So education is key and knowledge is power and always have that power 
when you contact your doctor for an appointment because it's going to help you and you could even help your doctor and steer them in the right direction by literally just watching this film. So here's what I want you to do. I want to I want all of you to go to thequestforsleep.com. You can watch the full documentary online and let me tell you something again and again you will learn things just as I did and begin to understand that sleep is just as important as food and water. And one last question for you, Steve. You got to tell us, how did you become the legendary pot roast? I mean, it's, I've just always loved the music of meatloaf. I went to school for theater, I, musical theater. Uh, I was working on a show. I was actually working on a puppet show and I met a woman who was a choreographer and she was doing a Janis Joplin tribute. And she asked me if I could do a backup with her. And then afterwards we had such fun. She's like, what should we do next? And I said, let's do meatloaf. And she was like, yes, that sounds great. And it is over the last 10 years, just become a full band and a, and an amazing thing. As I said, last night, we just celebrated meatloaf's birthday. Uh, he passed earlier this year, but this, so this was his first birthday and we had a great time. And it's just become some. it's the music I love. It's the music that, that makes me feel alive. And, you know, for that moment on stage, at least I'm very awake. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> but it's, it's, it's just been fantastic. Uh, we're planning our 2023, uh, dates right now. So you can follow me, uh, um, on Instagram at legendary pot roast and make sure you guys go see the quest for sleep at, uh, the quest for sleep.com. There you go. So, all right. Well, Steve, Ryan, rock on my brother. And for the rest of you viewers and listeners of the Dr. Ward Bond show, go to thequestforsleep.com. Watch the full documentary. Even Octavia Spencer, it narrates this wonderful film. You will be just as educated as I am when it comes to sleep. And I can tell you one thing for many of you who are dealing with sleep problems or insomnia, the answer is getting closer then you'll ever want to know. So that good night's sleep is coming your way. Again, to gain the knowledge in the areas of insomnia and sleep, thequestforsleep.com. Watch the full documentary again. I can just shout this from the rooftops because this is one of the best wellness documentaries I have ever seen. So again, ladies and gentlemen, thequestforsleep.com. Stay tuned because I will be right back after these messages. Day or night, in this life, you need me. You need sleep. But how much do you really know about me? Sleep is this magical kingdom <laughs> that, you know, I want to get into. Sleep is a calming of the body like you're floating. You are free of the pressures of life. Sleep seems to be an evolutionary adaptation for any organism to be able to restore cellular function. For human beings, for us, no aspect of your health is spared if you get less sleep. But why are there more of you struggling with me than ever before? I've been tired for 20 years. Why can't I go to sleep? What is the mystery and how do I get the key? I think the last time I had a great night's sleep was about five years ago. Nothing that I have tried has worked. For people who have insomnia, it causes true misery. Surely I'm gonna go to sleep tonight, like tonight's the night. No tiene que estar durmiendo. <sighs> yeah, I do. Usually I'm able to kind of keep it together. Everything just crashed. That was on top of nothing. This is what happens when you don't have enough sleep. I ended up going off the road. It was a wake up call. Perhaps you're starting to realize I'm just as complex as you are. How can you break free from the vicious cycle? What's keeping you awake? What needs to change is that relationship they have with their sleep. When you sleep the right way, you experience life at a different level. Having great sleep makes your next day so much better. You need to protect that sleep. I think that probably my journey in my relationship with sleep is gonna be lifelong. 
I am sleep, and it's time we talked. 